now I'm excited to have a conversation of my own together with Marilyn Raphael, Vice President at TD Asset Management and co-founder at our very best friends, Icon Talent Partners, here to chat about how to position yourself for success in the workforce. Hey, Marilyn. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? It feels like my face looks massive on the screen. <laughs> But I'm doing okay. We, we did the research, Marilyn, <laughs> and it turns out the community just wants our faces as big as possible. Got it. Got it. Hey, that's what, if you like it, I love it. <laughs> that's awesome. So first of all, let's make sure the audience gives us a huge round of applause to welcome Marilyn to the stage to hang out with us. Oh, and now hello. I'd love for you, while, that, while those numbers come in, for you to tell us a little bit more about what you do and your work with Icon Talent Partners. So uh, Icon Talent Partners is a not-for-profit organization for... Uh, high potential visible minority talent uh, that are interested in what we call high impact sectors. So sometimes that's considered consulting and uh, investment banking, asset management, including tech, corporate law, uh, places that are difficult to get into are very challenging and we support yeah. them with uh, technical skills training, soft skills training, and making a warm introductions to our network of uh, corporate partners that are really excited about diversifying their candidate pool as well as just their talent pipeline. Amazing. And, and so we're going to talk today about positioning yourself for success in the workforce. And of course, uh, you've not only positioned yourself and yep. maybe positioned Derek, but also positioned <laughs> lots of people uh, through your work with Icon Talent Partners. So tell me, what, what does it really mean to position yourself for success? Oh, uh, you know, I think a lot of people sometimes think positioning yourself means just creating a resume and outlining what you've done to date. Uh, but, you know, we, we subscribe to the belief, the philosophy that to really position yourself for success in the workforce, you really have to know yourself. I, I cannot stress this enough. Uh, there's nothing worse than being an extroverted people person that wants to be out there making sales and deals. And here you are stuck in front of a computer on Excel or looking at a piece of code. Yeah, I wouldn't know what just, that's like. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just in the wrong role. And so we really believe that uh, positioning yourself really starts with uh, a really solid self-assessment, getting to know your strengths, getting to know your weaknesses, getting to know the environments in which you thrive in. Mm -hmm. um, we know a lot of job postings always say like fast pace, amazing right. environment. Like if you can handle stress all day, this is where you want to be. Uh, not everybody's built for that. And if you know yourself, you'll know that's not an environment for you. Yeah. And uh, those are kinds of, that's that's the beginning part of how we start and, and that have, conversation. Have you, have you partaken yourself in some of the self-assessment and self-reflection work? Absolutely. I, it's been the best thing I've ever done for myself. Yeah. Can you remember the first time that you did it? Like the first time that you said like, with intention, I'm going to reflect mm -hmm. on what's important to me or what my strengths are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can. <laughs> so besides doing Icon that you mentioned, I do work at TD Asset Management. And mm -hmm. prior to landing my job in uh, as a vice president in business and product governance, I had a chance to be part of an MBA rotational program. So okay. here you have this 24-month program. You do four, six-month rotations enterprise-wide. Yeah. develop working on projects and you get a chance to figure out where you want to land mm. and through that process you really learn a lot about yourself and there are a lot of exciting opportunities you know sometimes the world is your oyster is not always the best thing because you don't know how to choose um, but you really get a chance to get clear on who you are mm. um, what matters to you what's the kind of work that's going to motivate you every day and I, I completed a variety of assessments I've completed Success Finders. I've completed yeah. Myers Briggs. Yeah. I've done Career Leader. I've done Success Finder. Yeah. Or I've done Clifton Strengths Finder. I've done Colby's. I've done. <laughs> Meryl, we don't I've... have that much time. I mean, we can go through all your self assessments. You you know? Know, I've done so many. And you know what? They're very consistent. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard for us to accept that because you you might think of yourself like I'm I'm positioned to be a product manager. Right. But if you really do a lot of those self-assessments, maybe that's not really who you are. Yeah. Maybe your skills and competencies don't align well with that relationship management piece. And that's not where right. you thrive. And if you really know yourself, you can position yourself accordingly. Well, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thought because tonight's theme we've been talking a lot about what did you want to be when you were growing mm -hmm, up? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, on one hand, that's like... Um, even before self-resection is required, it's like how yeah. you feel about yourself and what you think, but also where you end up can be based on self-reflection, the changes of it. Absolutely. So do you remember what you were, you wanted to be when you were growing up? 
Uh, I am a child of an immigrant, so I, I only had a few choices, and mm -hmm. I thought I wanted to do medicine. Yeah. Uh, I probably only knew what a doctor, like, I'm not sure I knew how many professions there were at age six. Yeah. Um, but I, I honed just wanted it, to make sure you only knew doctor. Yeah. So I honed it on physician until I actually participated in a program that University of Toronto put on called the summer mentorship program. Okay. And I got a chance to work in the hospital for one summer and become like a medical student for one summer. Oh yeah. And when I was in the hospital, I realized everybody was sick in that place and huh. it was not the place for me. Well, I mean, that's interesting. So how much do you think self-reflection is important versus trying and learning and being open I, to experiencing and then, and then growing and learning from it? Both of them I work hand in hand. Yeah. So it's not about theorizing in your brain. It's like the knowing is in the doing. I can only conceptualize what I think I'm going to do. It's really about actually doing it and saying, hmm, this is just not quite what I thought it was going to be. Um, and the reality is there are several transferable skills that go across industries. Yeah. So I can't remember the, the woman who went first. I, is it Jennifer who talked about from mm -hmm. Sensible? She That's talked right. about the fact that she loves people and she loves helping. Yeah. Now, helping for her has led her to be you know, a leader in people and change, but helping could also mean physician, helping could also mean athlete, helping could mean so many things. So it's not so much um, just what your interests are, mm -hmm. but really the application in doing for sure. Now, a lot of people are joining us tonight and, and they're hearing your advice to do the self-reflection, mm -hmm. uh, try and change um, and learn from it. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who are in transition, but for people who aren't in transition and joining us, mm -hmm. Um, how do you think about self-reflection when you're in a great spot and you're doing well? How does it help you think about what's next in your career? I think it still plays the same pivotal role, unless you're like super complacent and you have <laughs> no ambition. <Right. laughs> but I think if you're happy in your role, you're happy mm -hmm. in your career, uh, your, your uh, career choice, and you're just looking forward to what the next step is, maybe the next step in your journey is teaching other people how to get to where you are. Right. is uh, being a mentor, being a leader, being a people leader, and moving from an individual contributor and to now leading other people to do awesome work like you. There's always room for growth. I don't think you've ever fully arrived. Um, right. So I definitely think if you are in a position where you're happy, you love your industry, you know yeah. yourself, you know your strengths, pay it forward. Uh, and is that you today? What's next in your career? How do you think <laughs> about what you want to do next? Um, I'm, I'm new to, like I just said, I landed a, a job recently, so yeah. I have to do that job really well. I just started, <laughs> so I'm not quite, uh, having conversation of transitioning yet, but yeah. it is a stretch assignment for me. Yeah. Uh, it's a role in, in more regulatory and governance pieces. And so for me, I'm learning a different part of, uh, the investment management business that I didn't know before. Mm -hmm. And the reality is there are several industries that just have so many aspects. It'd be really hard to say you've mastered every piece yeah. you can be in tech and you you can say, you know, you're working in digital health work, but then you transition to CPGs or like there's so much to do that I, right. I don't think you'll ever get to the point where you've mastered it all. The last thing I want to I want to ask about uh, before we get to some audience Q&A, sure. insider Q&A is uh, when you when you get a dream job or a stretch assignment, which I think mm -hmm. we're, I think tonight we're all ambitious and excited and, and ready to grow personally. Mm -hmm. uh, how important is like your personal brand and getting a stretch assignment, mm. how important is mentorship in a stretch assignment? What are the key contributors of, of really landing that dream stretch goal? Well, first of all, you have to ask for it yeah. uh, and, and being very intentional about what you're looking for and why you're looking for it and what, what competency you're looking to develop through that assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have to perform once you do it and once you, you land it and, and show up. Um, and also get clear on what that brand is. I talked about assessments in the beginning because these assessment tools help you also develop the language that you want to use to start describing yourself. And you help other people know how to describe you by using that language to communicate about who you are. You, ha you have to give them the language they can mirror it back to you. Absolutely. Because, it, because when the next decision is being made about whether or not you should be considered for it. Right. It's less about mentorship and more about sponsorship. So it's mm -hmm. about the people who are having these private conversations about you yeah. and you want them to use the words that you would use to describe yourself. Right. So, so like you after want, you leave the session tonight, you would 
you would obviously you would know that this was a fantastic, wonderful experience that you would absolutely you would recommend to anybody. <laughs> and you've had such a great time. Here. <laughs> you're feeding me, you're priming me. That is exactly what you do. And you want people to start talking about you the way you want them to yes. perceive you and what matters to them. Yes. And matters yes. to you too. Amazing. So I, I'd love to bring up a TechTO insider now to ask a question. Sure. We, have, we have Sarah Chan here. I know Hi, she had a Sarah. great question to ask you. Hi. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. Nice to meet uh, you. Um, congrats, congrats on your role. It sounds Thank incredible. You. Always nice to see diversity and leadership, especially Thank at you. TV. Um, <laughs> so I'm Sarah, and I'm currently a management specialist at the University of Toronto. Okay. Um, I'm currently completing my final year, and I'm really trying to break into tech. I've mostly yeah. had experience in like the financial institutions area, so TD and yeah. American Express. Um, yeah. But I'm looking to pivot into the tech space, specifically maybe fintech. Um, sure. Do you have any advice for people like me who are trying to break into an entirely new industry that they don't have too much experience in? Yeah, I think, and you know, I should share that before I came into banking, I worked in healthcare and I worked in public health and I had no finance experience and no banking experience. But what I was able to do was to leverage what transferable skills and competencies I did have. So prior to coming into banking, I worked in project management, I worked in research management, and I was able to leverage the fact that I worked with a variety of stakeholders, um, different business partners and vendors to be able to say, I can do the same thing at a bank. And the reality is if you already have a uh, management or leadership experience that you you're coming from American Express or taking from TD Bank, you can also just leverage with the competencies you have and bring it to a fintech. A fintech is is a, a startup, but the reality is they still need all the functional areas that you a big organization would have. They just have a lot more uh, flexibility and agility to make decisions faster. Yeah. So if you are clear on what you've been able to achieve in another organization, as I mentioned, get clear on what your story is, get clear on what your goals and your interests are, and be able to just leverage that same story about how you thrived in your, your last role and how you can make uh, um, an impact in your new role. That's fantastic. Marilyn, in the chat, uh, I've never seen this before. People are actually saying they've been nodding along to each of your points the entire time <laughs> and realizing that nobody can see them nodding. <laughs> <laughs> so people people are giving you, um, they're trying to mirror your language. They're they're giving you affirmation. Thank you awesome. so much for joining us Thank tonight. you so much. Happy to be here. Good luck to everybody. I'm very excited for all of you. Awesome. Thanks, Marilyn. Uh